Hello everybody out there with type 1 diabetes. This is Dr. Jody Sanslaw and today I'm going to talk about uh, what are the environmental causes behind type 1 diabetes, a very hotly debated topic. Um, if you're just finding me for the first time, I have been coming live uh, Monday through Friday since COVID world began back in March. I am a type 1 diabetic myself for 40 years, and I help patients struggling with their blood sugar levels to have less highs and lows so you can confidently live a healthy and vibrant life. So let's see where I'm at today. Like I said, I've had type 1 for 40 years. I'm doing pretty good. A little bit of a rolly morning, but not bad. Um, a healthy range that I help patients achieve is 70 to 120, maybe 70 to 140 sometimes after meals, but 70 to 120 is actually the healthy range that I help patients achieve. The whole 80 to 180 is um, a little bit too uh, conservative in my opinion for what really good excellent care is. Uh, nobody without type 1 diabetes hangs out at 150 or higher. And I think that a lot of people expect 80 to 180 as normal because there's an assumption that it's too hard to get in a tighter range or that it's impossible or they don't know how to do it. They don't have the support or education. And that is why I've been coming live on Facebook to help all of you with type 1 is to give you tips on how to get really good blood sugar levels, the ones that you deserve, the ones that will allow you to live a healthy and long, vibrant life with type 1. So I, if you want to check out my website, it's drjodynd.com. I've got tons of resources there. And I've been working with patients virtually for 10 years, and I have online courses. But today I thought a fun topic that recently came out of the recent American Diabetes Association 80th Scientific Sessions was they gave a review of what the most common environmental causes are theorized to be for type one, which is of course, you know, the we don't really know, right? We've got a lot, a lot of theories. We know it's certainly not one thing. It's probably a combination. So here are some of the major highlights that I think you'll find interesting. Number one, it appears that beta cell destruction often begins very early in life, as early as the very first two years. So I was diagnosed when I was seven, so perhaps my destruction started when I was two or one, right? There may be two distinct subtypes of type one that are characterized by differences in genetics, the immune system, and various metabolic markers. Um, that seems pretty obvious. Uh, the value of of A1C as a predictive factor for uh, developing type 1 may differ between youth and adults who develop the condition. There's so many more adults now developing type 1. And I always explain that type 1 is an autoimmune form of diabetes. Type 2 is not autoimmune, and that's what the masses have. You know, I didn't, I didn't do anything uh, with my lifestyle to cause type 1, right? lifestyle i mean there's we're realizing there's certain things that are lifestyle related but type 1 is autoimmune and type 2 is not and we're only about 5% of the diabetes population out there um okay so the presence of enterovirus b in stool samples is predictive of islet autoimmunity development in children so this is going to take me to the next point where they're really looking at the gut microbiome. And there's definitely a difference in those of us with type 1 in our gut microbiome. It says the gut microbiome, all the probiotics, you know, that live in our gut, all those bugs that live in our gut. Um, this gut microbiome composition tends to be different in children who develop type 1 diabetes as those who do not. And they say this use of probiotics may help to mitigate this risk. Well, they have to say it may help because we still don't know. And then, of course, there's hundreds of different strains out there. So how do we know which strain to take, right? But if any of you have, you know, friends or family that are at high risk of type 1, you know, looking into taking probiotics might be something that is beneficial. Um, it says the use of antibiotics was not shown to be related to autoimmunity, which is interesting, right? Because that's a big theory that the antibiotics kill off bacteria and that can affect our immune system. Um, and then here's some exciting things. I often work with families that are newly diagnosed and want to extend their honeymoon. And I do have a supplement protocol for them. And I also work with families who are wanting to protect their other kids um, and somehow figure out how to prevent 
other kids getting type 1. And there's definitely supplements that I recommend. And I've had a lot of success with um, delaying honeymoon. And in this last statement, it says vitamin D, vitamin C, and polyunsaturated fats may carry preventative benefits against autoimmunity. And then, of course, they say, although this needs to be validated in further studies. <laughs> but I do recommend vitamin D and vitamin C and omega-3s to anybody that's newly diagnosed um, to prolong the honeymoon, as well as anybody that's high risk of getting it, like siblings. For those of us that already have it, there's definitely benefits to vitamin D and vitamin C and omega-3s as well. Um, I'm not promising anybody that we can get our beta cells back. But it's exciting, all of this research that's being uncovered for how we can prevent type 1, right? Um, I still am grateful that they're working on helping us that already have it, but it is very exciting, all the work that's going into preventing type 1. So I'll take this, um, the link to this article, and I'll post it in the thread below. But I thought this was a really, I mean, I'm not giving you tips today exactly how to get better blood sugar levels, but I'm hopefully giving you some information that you find valuable. Now, if you are struggling with your blood sugar levels and you want some help, I definitely encourage you to check out my website, which is drjodynd.com. I have had type one for 40 years. Um, I've been in your shoes every day. I feel like so many people that um, have type one, we feel like we just can't find the help that we need. And luckily, all of these Facebook groups and, you know, we learn a lot from each other. And so I've created courses to help you and group, I have group programs and, you know, private calls, but I've committed my career to helping those of us with type one. Myself went to doctors for so many years and just felt like, I'm not gonna help you. Um, anyways. Uh, that is my message for you today is um, if you need help, reach out to my website and I hope you've, uh, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll point, I'll put the link to this article down below. Leave a comment. Do you like these videos? What do you like learning? I've been doing them uh, Monday through Friday for about over three months now, right? April, May, June. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do them. I always have new programs coming out though. So I'll definitely inform you guys of how you can keep following me. My goal is eventually to make a membership program so we can all have, you know, really good um, guidance together because I do it one-on-one -on -one with patients right now and I really want to reach more of you. So I'm working on trying to figure out how to do that. But in the meantime, I'm here. Leave a comment below. Find, you know, great resources on my website, Dr. Jody ND. I come live on Facebook uh, about three o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Eastern, Monday through Friday. And I, I love it. I love reaching out to all of you with type one. Feel free to comment below and uh, let me know what you think. So have a great day. Here's some great blood sugar levels. Um, yep, I'm, I'm happy with that. Doing pretty good today. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.